and hit record. Oh, and it's recording. It's so exciting. Okay, and now I'm going to share my screen. I think. What am I sharing? I am sharing this and share. All right, oops, that's not the slide I want us to be on. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna do it this way. Um, John Crippo has been doing it this way. All the uh, things that I've been doing have been this way, so I'm not gonna put it in the full screen. Why, uh, do you guys see me or do you see the screen? No, we see both. I see both. Oh, oh weird, okay. All right, um, so Kristen, if you can kind of look at the, when I'm talking, if you could look at like the chat, make sure everything's okay, and I'll do the same for you. Sound cool? All right, so basically we're just going to talk about super quick, super easy um, ways for you guys to have your students review through uh, repetition um, using several standards at once. It's a really great tool. You can do it online. You can do it, hey Megan, you can do it, um, uh, you know, in the classroom. In the classroom I often use paper. Um, Amanda Sandoval did one uh, yesterday, I think it was, and it was amazing and it's all online. Um, you can use the same format daily. You just change the numbers around. Uh, Kristen will talk about how you can use it in upper grades as well. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other um, math protocols that you can use with this. Um, so we have a Fast and Curious we'll, we'll talk about, uh, Iron Chef, Thin Slides. Oh, I don't think I did Thin Slides. I think I had that thought in my head. Uh, number Mania, Welcome to My World, and Number Talks. Okay, so this was the original OG uh, math reps. Um, as you can see, there are several uh, standards that are here. So they're doing it, this is fifth grade. I'm sorry, let me back up. So this is fifth grade and all of the templates, we have everything from kindergarten all the way up through high school. So if you're needing anything, we, we have stuff. Um, and we always invite people to create. Uh, Kristen was one of them. She created some. Jeremiah's created a bunch. Uh, Megan's created some. Um, I'm sure there are other people on here that have also created some. Um, so you can see here, it just changing. We have one number. And so the students are talking about how do you put, you know, change it from a decimal to a fraction, use expanded form. Um, what is that number 10 times greater, 100 times greater, so on and so forth. How do you add um, these numbers using the decimal points? Um, you know, then they come up, they're comparing decimals, decimal that comes before it, a decimal that would come after it, prime factors. This one shows up on a lot in fifth grade just because they can't get it down in the in the time that we do the rest of this. So we just keep practicing. Um, so a ton of these, and then they can start to see, they can start to make these connections, especially with over here, the 10 times greater, 100 times greater, uh, you know, 10 to the third power, how all of those start to combine and mesh together. Um, I know there was something else I was going to say. Oh, and if you like some of these, we're going to invite you to, you know, file, make a copy, make your own copy, and add and delete things. This year I've had to add and delete a whole lot of boxes based on the needs of my students. All right, Kristen, take it over. So uh, forgive me for the not so high quality photo, but I wanted to put this in here because it correlates actually to the next slide as well. Um, so when I first heard Lisa talking about math reps and I saw like the, the document that she just showed, I thought to myself, wow, this is, this is awesome. This is like a one page, like connect the dots to all the math that you want students to learn. And it's about making the connections, right? So I, like how Lisa was connecting at whatever number it is, get, you know, one tenth of it, one hundredth of it, and then relate the fraction to the decimal. I just found this like mind blowing, like, wow, this is what a math teacher's dream is right here. You know, connecting um, prior knowledge to current knowledge and keeping it real. So I started thinking, um, you know, what can I do in my classes? And, um, you know, I teach high school math. Uh, I'm teaching pre-calc. And our calculus teacher was saying, um, wow, I really want kids to know the unit circle. Okay, so unit circle is to calculus as the multiplication tables are to fourth grade. So anyone who's, who's been a parent, you remember in third, fourth grade, your kids had to memorize those multiplication tables. 
Um, and there was a lot of fun ways to do it. And there's a lot of like dreadful ways to do it. So same kind of goes true with the unit circle where I would give them a different angle every day. And then based on that angle, they had to get all six trig functions. And we weren't just going to keep that angle in um, degrees. We were going to, at some point, change it to radians. So I had them think about, okay, well, how would you convert it to degrees? How would you convert it to radians? And then because all the trig functions are the same for that angle, every single time you go around the unit circle, 360 degrees, you end up in the same spot. So now there's literally an infinite number of angles coterminal to that one that would have the same trig functions um, and also ones just in the quadrant. So um, I thought of math reps immediately as an opportunity to practice and connect the dots where kids had a chance to see all the parts, not just get just the sign of that angle or just draw the unit circle, but you can see by looking at it, all the pieces are there. And then Lisa, if you can go to the next slide, then here's another example. That same angle, pi force is the same as 45 degrees. And I explain it like you can measure in inches or you can measure in centimeters. It's still the same length of a line, same thing with angles. You can measure with um, degrees or radians. So then my students had to do it all over again with radians. So the end result with this is I did this every day in class as our warmups, and I put the, the, the blank template into um, plastic paper protectors. I gave the kids dry erase markers, and I said, here is today's angle. And every day we would do one or two angles. And then um, I know Lisa's gonna talk about it later on in the, in the session, but I back that up with the um, Edu Protocol Fast, Fast and Curious with quizzes games. And maybe when we get to that section, you could look. But I put over here a, a spreadsheet to see how my kids did. Um, so they've got the math reps. They backed it up with um, quizzes, Fast and Curious Edu Protocol. And when it came time, my site wanted to give time test. Well, although I'm not a fan of time tests, I, I gave some time tests because my, my calculus teacher and my, the pre-calculus team wanted to do that. But my students' experience was different because my students weren't afraid. They had done these math reps over and over again that by the time it came to do the time test, it was no problem because they did it over and over again and saw the connection between all the parts. So I'm a big fan, and thank you, Lisa, for coming up with this idea of uh, putting it all in one, one spot. Yeah, um, and uh, time tests are fantastic. Uh, I mean, not fantastic, sorry. I was reading and trying to talk at the same time, which clearly I can't do. Um, but Fast and Curious are excellent um, in replacing it uh, with the time test. Um, and I had somebody at my school uh, was giving time tests. I was like, no, 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 try this fast and curious. And when we talk about it more, she then la later emailed me throughout the day. and was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for this. Um, so we do have some old school ones. Um, they are, you will have access to this um, quickly. If you wanted to look at it now, we can um, hop over there. Um, we have, I have it broken down into K235, um, I was dreaming up some other things to do, six, eight, nine, twelve, 12. Uh, and those are just some of the basic ones that we have that are in there. So you can go ahead and take a look at those. Um, you can find that at bit.ly slash, forget it, I forgot what it is, math reps or something. I forget what it is. <laughs> but if you go to mathreps.com, uh, you'll get there as well. And people are adding things all the time. Um, and it's just so exciting to see everything grow. So this is one, this was an amazing one that Amanda Sandoval came up with. She put it in Pear Deck. Um, and so now we're dabbling with putting it in Pear Deck um, and Nearpod, depending on what you have. Um, I now have Nearpod um, just for a short time period. So I'm gonna try it in Nearpod as well. Um, and she just themed it out. She took the exact same things. It was for a first grader. So she took the exact same things that were already on one of the first grade math reps 
and then decided to like make it a little bit more fun and you know it was all Pokemon it was for her son who's in first grade and so it's all Pokemon themed and it's super cute and she invites anybody to you know go ahead and use it just go ahead again and file make a copy um, so I'm gonna stop here if you have any questions feel free to ask them you can like shout it out you don't have to type it and before we move on to other uh, math protocols Hey, Lisa, mm -hmm. I know Nick, Nick's in our, in our, in our um, session right now from Pear Deck and I'm friends with Nick and you know, I present on Pear Deck, uh, often. Oh, yeah. and I'm going to be doing Pear Deck three act math for um, the upcoming Q virtual conference. Um, I think it's really cool that Amanda Sandoval did this with Pear Deck because Pear Deck is a way for you to see all your students responses, right? You, you push it out to them in a, a Google slideshow students get to respond and then you can reveal the whole class's responses so that's pretty ingenious of amanda to put a, a math rep into pear deck because you can get into all your kids um, thought process in a, a matter of literally seconds just by um sharing it to them with pear deck so awesome uh, props to amanda for putting it into pear deck yeah, and Brianna Davis um, just put in the chat that it was a great ab smash. So if you're not following the chat, um, she also says she loves Pear Deck. So thank you. Yeah, so and, much. and guys, I'm I'm not I'm not here to to spy on you. I, uh, <laughs> I as Chris as Kristen said, I uh, we we've known each other for several years now. Um, I, I'm here because I saw this on Twitter, um, and I was just really impressed. And um, we work with the EDU protocols folks as well to recreate some of their activities. Um, and I just thought this was a fantastic way to do a repeatable activity with students, especially uh, for remote learning. Um, and uh, so one thing you can do in Pear Deck is, is turn an activity into student paste mode. And so if you shared out this lesson to a group of 30 or 40 kids, they would all be going through it at their own time, wherever they are. Um, and, and as the teacher, you could put like a deadline on, on, you know, when to have that done or just have that be the daily activity. So I looked at that and just thought it was so genius and repeatable. And, you know, when during these times when it's challenging to, 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 to get something like this out to everybody, just thought it was great. So I just want to learn more. That's why, that's why I'm here. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Um, Marta, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I'm wondering if um, at, at maybe at the end, if you can go in and pull up one of the third grade ones that has the game board, because I'm really unclear how to use the game board. Oh yeah, that was my brain. I'm sorry. You have to be in my okay. brain to figure it out. <laughs> That's fine. If, if you can just tell me how to use that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. We can do that. Okay. And uh, Michelle asked if everybody has to be doing it at the same time. Um, I've known uh, Jeremiah's talked about people who have done um, each kid kind of gets their own math rep to work on uh, based on their own individual needs so hopefully that answered that question um, so moving on here we have it number media um, oh and, sorry yeah I'm sorry I was I was muted um, I have a question so I teach fifth grade oh yes, you go back too. to that fifth grade one um, yeah, yeah. you have and is it okay that we put our little hand up that way, you know? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so like with that one, it's super like, how would you do that with a Pear Deck? Cause I love using Pear Deck and my kids are familiar with it, but with this whole e-learning thing, they're not going to be familiar with this chart. So right. like, how would you do that in a Pear Deck? Would you just make each slide like something different? Like, yeah, Oh, this slide do 10 times greater to that number. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. And I probably wouldn't put everything on one pair deck at once either. I just kind of start off right. slow with, you know, three or four at a time and then build on from there. Because once yeah. they get it, they'll get it. Yeah. You know, and then you can add good. on to it. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right. And so number mania is just another one. So you can give the students um, a number. So like the number 24. And then you can have them come up with... Uh, you know, equations, factors, have them round, put it on a number line, and they can do all of those things um, and just kind of manipulating that number so that they can get a uh, better number sense. I'm, I'm noticing my students don't necessarily have great number sense this year, so we're doing a lot of playing around with that as well. 
Um, another idea, so these are just extra um, like math protocols uh, that we're kind of playing around with. Quizzes. So, right. So, Kristen talked about it a little bit earlier. So, here's just a screenshot of, you know, this is what they see if you're not familiar with it. It's a lot like Kahoot, um, but it's on their screen. So, I had my students practicing their uh, multiplication facts, fifth grade they weren't super solid in them. So we did these every day. You don't even have to make them up. They're already online. They're already in the quizzes app. You just be like, yes, that's the one I want. You do, so we do the fast and the curious. I do protocol with this. So we do it twice on Mondays. And the first time we do it, they're terrible at it. And I taunt them. I'm like, oh, you people are terrible. And, you know, we all giggle about it. And then we go through them and we write down what their score was. So if they had a score of, they were averaging, oh gosh, they were averaging in like the 40s or 50s, I think, when we started. And, you know, they started getting better at it. And so you write down the low score and it scores them as a group. So it doesn't have to be as a whole, as in, you see the individual, um, pieces, but you don't uh, necessarily, you know, show the kids that they just see the, the group score. And then they, um, we go through the answers and then we immediately do it a second time and automatically the score goes up. And then we do that throughout the week. We'll do it once or twice um, every day. I was only doing it through Thursday, but then they begged, they begged to do it on Fridays. So we do it every day of the week. Um, great story. After Christmas break, we have three weeks off at Christmas break, and I was really nervous. We were averaging in the high 90s that um, I, we were averaging in the high 90s, and after Christmas break, I was like, oh gosh, they're going to go down. I didn't think they'd go down too terribly much. I thought, oh, maybe 80s. No, we came back and they were still at a 94%. So they had retained that information. So I'm super happy with this edu protocol. Um, hey, yeah. Hey, can I chime in, Lisa? About yeah, yeah. Um, so when you're back, if you, you don't need to go back, but on my slide, I put a link to the um, downloadable um, quizzes um, Excel spreadsheet that's created. Uh, for any of you guys have never used quizzes, um, a lot of teachers are like, well, you know, how do I track how they did? Right after you play the game, um, a bunch of uh, statistics come up. I hope I didn't, I hope I linked it correctly. Oh, no, um, I think I'm overloading my system. So, oh, there it is. There okay. Go. So, like, there I can see each student. Uh, I can see their score. And if you scroll down, I can see... Um, the overall gameplay, like the overall score, like my overall accuracy was 81%. This first student got 100%. That second student got 100%. So as you play um, quizzes, it does generate reports for you. So if that's, you know, a, if that's important to you, it is part of the quizzes game. And one thing that this one came with this was the rating game that I had them playing while we were doing the trig reps. And another function of quizzes, since none of us will be face to face for, you know, at least a few weeks to a month, maybe longer, you can put it in homework mode. So what I did for my um, pre-calc students is I put the game in homework mode and I set it up for a week or so. And I, it gave them a chance to play it over and over again at home. And I told them, hey, you know, by the end of this time frame, I'll take your best score. So you can see I got a lot of 100% there, but that wasn't because they took it the first time. That was their best score from that week that I had it open as homework. So you can achieve kind of a lot of the same ideas in the same feel of quizzes, even if you put it into homework mode, the kids get to do it that way. And then another great feature of quizzes is if you put it into solo mode, it creates your whole game and turns it into flashcards. So there's another resource for your kids. So there's a lot of great things that quizzes does to support the work of math reps. Yeah, thank you.
That was good. I know I, there is somebody in here um, who said that um, she's tried it with the uh, my pre-AP honors geometry, and when she told them to keep working uh, to make it a hundred percent, tell that you know they got a hundred percent, they they thought she was crazy. <laughs> So I'm not sure what's going on with those kiddos. Sometimes, you know, things work for certain kids and, you know, other groups, it just doesn't work for. It. It's weird. Um, and another one, a final one that we'd like to share. Jeremiah, you want to do this one? This is yours, the Freyer model? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so Sorry, I'm a big I put, fan. Sorry, put you on the spot on that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no worries. Um, so I'm a big fan of the Freyer model. And uh I'd like to do it in the quadrants. So if you notice, uh, you'll see one is in the upper right hand quadrant. That's quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Um, if you're looking around the, the numbers there. Uh, so basically it's just different representations. And this is a, an adaptation from Bowler's uh, diamond paper. Uh, Dr. Bowler had worked with our school district in our county. Um, and one of the things she took away was this idea of kind of like a, a diamond paper, uh, which is usually just a blank piece of, a piece of paper that you know I have kids hold and they work on individually. Um, and so this was this one was set up from uh, an adaptation that uh, Lisa had put together from um, putting the different representations that Graham Fletcher had rep had made in his um, video on the progressions of fractions. And I've been working with a lot of uh, fourth through eighth grade students in fractions. And so um, this was a really cool way to help uh, show them those variations and those different ways of looking at it. Um, and then using that to build on their on their existing knowledge for uh, challenging them for other things. And so, in some of the work that I'm doing recently, uh, we were this was one of the the reps that we were walking through. And so this is their like warm up every day. Um, and then we move on to uh, a variety of different problems. And to see if this actually transferred, what was really cool was uh, I, I had given them a, a four question um, representation of these different problems growing in complexity. And it had started at about, uh, gosh, I think the highest class was 30% were at a two or above. Um, and by the end of our last, actually this today would have been the last day with those kids. Um, uh, but last week, as of last week, 100% um, of the kids were at 75% or above. So uh, this is really powerful in how um, giving these repetitions gives them the opportunity to really access the thinking. So I hope that yeah. explains it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right. Um, so I think that's it. <laughs> like, I just want to honor everybody's time. And I know, like, sitting in front of computers and we're all, you know, furiously trying to figure things out. Um, so um, we would like to thank you. So this is uh, the link. So bit.ly slash math reps online. It is case sensitive. So it has to be a capital M, a capital R, and a capital O. I double checked the settings before I got in and it, there's the link. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I put in the link late. Sorry, Kristen. <laughs> um, so it just occurred to me at the last moment. So here's my information. Um, feel free to contact me at any point in time. I am happy to you know, connect with you on anything. I know Kristen is, if you know Jeremiah, he, he does stuff too, but he's, he's got a busy life, so leave him alone. Um, <laughs> and uh um, yeah, if you have any questions, I'd we'd be happy to, you know, hang around and chat. And I'll put the vi the link to this video. Once it's there, I'll put it on this slide as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Sounds awesome. Yeah, and that's what people were wanting. They want that link. So now we got it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I make you stay to the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could you yeah. guys put the link in the chat? That might be an easy way to get it. Oh, yeah, you're right. All right. And then go back over the game board. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Please. That was that's why I made a terrible waitress. Like I would walk away and people would be like, <laughs> Oh yes, I would like that. I was like, Oh, I forgot what I was doing two minutes after I walked away. <laughs> terrible, terrible waitress. All right, so I'm gonna go into this is the actual folder. Um, I do have um, other things in here. So let's see, you needed the three. Yeah. Third grade. Going to third grade. I will try and remember what my brain thought was. I thought it was trying to be clear. Oh, I remember now. Okay, so essentially you have a spinner. So here's a spinner so you can have the kids put a pencil, uh, and you know, paper and then a paper clip, right? right? right. And then here's a blank one so you can modify it as you want. Okay. So this is the one that I would, 
I would use. Um, so they spin it, they start here, they go, you know, one space, okay. So on there, they then have a paper. So they would then have this paper, we'll say. Okay. And they have to add. So they go to the adding one, they are have already given numbers, and then they add it um, with the, the, the place value method. Okay. And you can put it in like a sleeve so that they can just reuse it and then have right. them write, you know, I, like that. I use whiteboard. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, they, they practice it. They do it. Fantastic. And then they go back here. They spin again. They get a three. So the person is here. One, two, three. Okay. Now they have to go onto their board and they have to use the, um, the array or whatever. It yeah. Is. Whatever it is that they need to do. Okay. So it just kind of goes. And if they hit the addition again. Then they erase it and redo it. <laughs> all right. I, just, I don't like to make things difficult. And and they probably wouldn't necessarily hit all the boxes by the time they get through, correct? Right. And so, that's okay. So I mean, but the ideally there. you're doing these papers uh, like on a daily basis right. or some version of this on a daily basis. So this, this is more of an extra thing so that you're, you know, just, pra you know, just extra practice. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. I just, I was looking at the blank one and then the one with the things and then the box. And I'm like, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Okay. Right. So and that, my brain works in very wet, wacky ways and it's not always a good thing. <laughs> That's okay. Not a problem. Got it. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you. That looks fun, Lisa. I like that. Thank you. I have them for most of the grades for a little, for a little bit. K5. Yeah. I mean, and I'm actually glad that they asked that question because I've always wondered how you use those. So that was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, I was a brave one. I'll ask. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I like it. Yeah, I, I've, a lot of people have asked um, that question in the past. Like, I don't get it. So clearly, I'm not explaining myself clearly on that. I should probably make a video. I guess I'm going to have time in the future. <laughs> we'll see, right? I love it. All right, so I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end. Um, I'm gonna stop recording, and we can continue talking if we want. Now I have to figure out how to stop recording. Well, I have I'll... a question for yeah. people that are, you know, obviously working from a distance with kids. So, like, you know, I've been using lately in second grade. I've been using the prayer for different strategies for subtraction with regrouping, or addition with regrouping, or multiplication facts. Um, so that's obviously great on paper. I do some of my math reps on slides, but you know, the prayer is obviously just way better on paper usually for at least for stuff like that, because you want to see what the kids are doing. So I'm trying to figure out a way to push that out to them. I mean, they can all obviously fold it just fine now. Um, but how to like get it back from them. So uh, just just to, um, you know, we saw Amanda Sandoval use Pear Deck. I would use Pear Deck. I use Pear Deck a lot in my math classroom at the high school level when I want to get students thinking. Okay, so they, you could use Pear Deck, put that slide up, and then have them use the draw feature, and they can draw. And then you, you would see when you get on the class view, you would see each kid's drawing. So that would be one way to do it and you could still you know do it electronically because there is a draw feature on Pear Deck. There is also a typing feature so they could do a combination of typing or drawing. How much is available through Pear Deck that's free though? I mean I know now right now it's free right? Well there has always been a free version okay right. and then a premium version. So the main one of the main differences between free and premium is free is totally anonymous, okay? So you can't, you can't really see the student names, whereas um, the premium version, you can see all the kids' names. But the free version works if you just wanna get a pulse on the class, on what they're thinking, free is good. And again, you know, I don't know if Nick is still on the line, but I think right now, because of the, the coronavirus situation, that premium is, is, is good for um, 90 days. Right. I think I'm just trying not to reinvent the wheel for them to learn one because we don't use Pear Deck typically because of that. So I'm I'm trying to 
keep keep things pretty consistent with them at home so they're not learning something new. Um, Another thing I'm going to do. Prairie Duck is user friendly, obviously, but. Kind of old school, like uh, I just, you know, I'm the tech coach for a large high school and I just got off a, right before this, a session with um, district wide with math teachers, how I'm having them use HyperDocs uh, during this time to deliver lessons through Google Classroom. And one thing that is, you know, just so relevant to math is handwritten work. So another simple thing you could do is take a math reps template that you want to use and then tell kids, hey, get out a piece of paper, do it on paper, and then insert a photo of that piece of paper into the doc. That's so, kind of what I figured I would do. I just wondered yeah. if it was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just some ideas. Sounds good. There was a couple ideas about using Seesaw or Flipgrid in the chat as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Flipgrid we use, Seesaw, I'm, I'm more of a, we kind of just stick to Google Classroom, but Flipgrid, yeah, would be the other option. Because they have that option in Flipgrid now where they can um, bring up like a whiteboard on their screen yeah. and do it. Um, not always the friendliest, the friendliest thing to do, especially if they just have a trackpad and, you know, the writing and stuff like that is kind of a pain sometimes. But, but you, photo, photo and seesaw would work really good. Mm -hmm. But also, I've used Flipgrid where I just threw a, a problem out to the class. Again, I said, get out a piece of paper and um, do your solution. And then they go like this. Yeah. Okay, here's yeah. my solution, la, la, la. And they just hold their piece of paper up to the Flipgrid camera and talk yeah. about it. So I've just, done that too, yeah. Yeah, just kind of old school, meshing old school with new school when it comes to math classroom. Right. Yeah. I think sometimes sticking with the basics is, is best. I, I, you know, I, I do a lot of it on paper. Like they, I just feel that they need to be writing a lot of these things out, you know, especially with like fifth grade and you have to do area model division. Like there's no easy way to do that yeah. <laughs> online. Well, and again, with back to the paper model, one thing I've done that's kind of cool too is in Google classroom, let's say you have 30 students. You set up a blank Google slideshow with 30 slides, and each kid has their number, like, okay, Morales, your number 13 or 14, whatever mm -hmm. you are. Yeah, right? I've done that, yeah. Then I've done that with second graders. It's, it's, a, it's a tough one with them. <laughs> well, Things well, disappear and uh, get rearranged a lot, so yeah. But yeah, I mean, so, so I might, now that we're going on the distance learning model, um, just to give you know my high school students a chance to share, I know especially my pre-calc students, they are very, very concerned about getting problems right. So I might open up Google Slides, Google Slides for every homework assignment and say, okay, here's all the problems, pick one, take a picture, show your answers. So it's, there's ways to take your, your um, handwritten work and make it digital and still have that collaborative feel within the class. Cool, thank you. Anybody have any other questions, thoughts, words of wisdom? All right, so thank you everybody.